I was only eight years old when I first started struggling with body dysmorphia. There was this damn photo of me sliding down a slide at a swim party and I just focused on my pooch. I saw this little kid pooch and I obviously am a little kid, but I was horrified. So I even taught myself how to suck in every single time I sat down from then on out. And I don't know why, I don't know if I was just scared kids were gonna point at it and laugh at me, but it was, it was traumatizing. This obsession over my stomach and my pooch followed me all throughout my teenage years, even up until adulthood. Cheerleading was a huge part of my life. It made me the confident person that I was. I was such a shy, awkward, unsure of myself little girl and cheerleading brought me out of my shell and my comfort zone and it made me fall in love with performance. And like I said, I had this confidence in me that just blossomed and I still hold it to this day. So I'm very grateful for cheerleading. But body dysmorphia and cheerleading, of course, played hand in hand together. I was really tall, I was really lanky and I was really flexible. So it seemed like every other year I was going back and forth between flying and basing. So being the person who lifts the girl up and versus being the girl who is being lifted. Anytime I was the flyer, I was one of the tallest of the bunch. And then as a base, I just felt really scrawny and weak sometimes. I felt like I really didn't fit in any position or anywhere. Don't worry, I made myself fit with performance though. That was my key thing. I remember being a flyer and the days we had practice, I would be really stressed about what to eat because I was scared of, you know, feeling heavy when they picked me up, even though that's not necessarily how that works. That's just something that always came into my mind. And then as a base, there was less stress, but then I had to fight myself for feeling really scrawny. So it was like, there was never a win-win. And then of course with All Star you wear crop tops. So I loved that aspect and I wanted to show my body off, but I was just so self-conscious that I was mortified. I don't know if it was like if I was flying and if they saw me in my pooch or they saw my rolls, they were gonna look at me and be like, damn, she's a fat flyer. Like those kind of things I was mortified of. I couldn't, I was so self-conscious and I thought everyone was just gonna look and point and laugh. I had a really unhealthy habit of weighing myself a lot and staring at myself in the mirror obsessively and poking my stomach every single time I ate something. I just thought it was instantly making me fat. But what I can tell you, staring at myself in the mirror was not pleasant. And for having body dysmorphia, I was also very confident, but it was almost like I just had to force it. That was the only way I could survive was if I just made myself feel confident, even if I felt like I was falling apart. In 2019, I got to retire from cheerleading and I actually found a lot healthier relationship with working out in the gym. I started to fall in love with the results I was seeing, I felt really strong. I was getting muscle growth for the first time and I felt alive. I was trying all these different forms of exercise just to see what I liked. I was doing yoga, I was kickboxing, which was so much fun. And I was teaching dance fitness at the time. So I got to move my body in lots of different ways. And I got to find a healthy relationship with food. I was eating really good food that I liked that made me feel really energized and happy and overall, I felt like my quality of life was better and there was just a sigh of relief. When COVID hit in 2020, I mean, it just sent me into a whole nother spiral as I'm sure it did many people with being at home and you're also bored. You have so much time on your hands that you're not used to. I was going, going, going constantly. All of a sudden I'm stuck inside. What are you gonna do? I love food. I love to cook. So yeah, I wanted to eat again and eat lots of things. I started to feel myself slipping a little bit, just uncomfortable with all the free time I had. So I was working out a lot more. I started working out for like hours a day, just workout after workout after workout. And eventually I burnt out and I was like, something needs to change. Like this, this needs to stop. I'm really tired of feeling this way about myself and there's really no need to. I don't wanna waste my years of my life feeling so uncomfortable that I won't wear clothes that I wanna wear, that I won't go do things I wanna do because I'm so worried about my body. So we gotta change this. I knew I needed to be grateful for my body. I, I knew that you need to be thankful and it does a lot of things for you, but I just could not shake my image issues, shake the negative voices that were just talk, talk, talking in my ear. I was going over my curriculum for Revive, their monthly workshop dance events I created for anyone who has ever just wanted to try dance to come in and give it a shot because I think dance is very healing towards your mental health and the way you view yourself. So it's kind of like a just confidence, self-love and growth workshop that you can come and you learn to dance. It's a lot about dance, but it's more about what, it, what dance does for you. So. I knew I needed to revamp it a little and my biggest problem was I was struggling a lot with my confidence in my body myself. So I was like, how can I get through to these women that I'm trying to help if I feel like this? I was like, okay, what's the most important part? 
of feeling confident or what are tools I could use on a daily basis when I'm feeling down? Obviously I use dance. So what can I give to these women in my classes to take home when they're really struggling to use? It, I mean, obviously they're gonna feel great and on cloud, cloud nine after dancing. What can I do that's gonna stick with them so they can carry to the days that they wake up and feel unlovable or just feel unworthy and just don't feel beautiful. And then this thought came to me and I really wanna share this. I realized that I didn't hate my body because I hated my body. I felt really insecure and I think I disliked my body so much or put so much hate on it because of what I thought I should look like to other people. What boys like and what boys think's hot or what cheerleading body I think that I should have or what I think other people should look at me as or what we were seeing on social media all the time. I felt like I needed to fit a mold and really I just needed to fit my own mold of myself. I always hated my body because I never gave myself the chance. I never gave myself the chance to feel beautiful myself. Whatever it is that you hate about yourself, is it because of something someone said to you? Is it because you think you look different? Is it because you feel like you should look a certain way? I realized I never got to decide what I think about my body and what I think is beautiful. I want to stop you for a moment and ask you, what do you think is beautiful? All right, so here's the process of really trying to rewire your brain in this, okay? Bear with me, you can do it. It's gonna feel really weird. It's gonna seem uncomfortable, but trust me, this is what I do for my job. And this is what I do with these women in live classes. You can do this. Just open mind, listen to me and decide for yourself. What you're gonna do is you're gonna sit in front of the mirror for about two to five minutes. Make some time, light a candle, play some music, make it a hell of a evening. Again, like I said, it's only gonna be two to five minutes. So it doesn't have to be for like an hour or anything like that. Short and sweet. You can do it in the morning or before bed or before you take a shower, those are really good times, but whatever works best for you and fits in your schedule is perfect. Now, before you look at your reflection, try and wipe your mind clean of any body you've ever seen, maybe even including your own. I want it to be no expectations, no judgment, just a clean slate. You've never seen another body before, ever in your life, or ever have been told what's beautiful and what's not. And I know this is really hard, but the more we can try and practice this, I think this is this is what's gonna help. And when you're ready, take a look at yourself. Now your eyes are gonna immediately go to the parts of yourself that you don't like or that you feel are unworthy of love. But really try to look at yourself tenderly and sweetly and without judgment at all. Look at yourself like you were looking at a lover or a friend for the first time. Think to yourself, what do you love about your body? And it's okay if there's a lot of things in it. I know the mental, game of body dysmorphia, it's very psychological. What do you love about yourself? What do you think? And even if it's like, I think my collarbone's really pretty, my left one, or both of them, like anything. You deserve to tell her, you, you deserve to tell her that, and you deserve that love. And if this is really difficult, start with some of these statements that you can say to yourself out loud. I am beautiful, I am lovable, and I am worthy. Feel free to change the words around, make it gorgeous, intelligent, strong, confident, whatever it is that you wanna say, recite those to yourself, no matter what. So a little recap of how this will go down is every day you're gonna either start the day, end the day, middle of the day with your mirror talk. Two to five minutes, play some music, take a couple of deep breaths, look really sweetly at yourself without judgment, that's so important and start finding things that you love about yourself and that you think is beautiful. Even on the days where you feel like an ugly troll and you get out of bed and the voices are just so loud and you feel unlovable and just undesirable, do it because you know what? It's going to become muscle memory. The days where it's really hard to get out of bed because you just don't want to. You have a meeting or you have to go on an interview or you have to be in front of people and you just feel so gross you don't want to. Like this will take over those voices eventually, or at least be so muscle memory when those voices start coming, he's gonna be right here, even taller. And I, I promise you'll be so beneficial. Look at it like you're getting to know a whole different person. Re-get to know yourself. It's a new you, a new body, a new frame of mind. Smile at her, even if you're really sad, smile at her, tell her you love her, tell her she's valuable and important because she is. And it may feel really uncomfortable. And I just encourage you to push through it because you deserve to hear it and she deserves to hear it.
Try this every day for a couple of weeks. And I mean every damn day. You need to be giving yourself a compliment and telling yourself you're beautiful and hyping yourself up every day. Be really cautious of the negative talk as well because it's probably going to happen. Always make sure you, you just knock it out firsthand. So if it starts talking, you always need to say something to counteract it no matter what. No matter if you feel like it's true or not, you need to say, no, I'm not going to talk about myself like that. I'm beautiful. You are so valuable and worthy of love, so treat yourself as such. Rewiring your mind is definitely the hardest part. And for me, I'm still a work in progress. I still to this day have days where I just feel super insecure, but you know what? I have it muscle memory now, so where if I'm feeling really down and negative that they're there, I don't know. They're always there to fight back. And I always know that I'm loved and valuable no matter how shitty or disgusting or troll-like I feel that day. And it took a lot of trial and error and this was something that worked for me and I know that what works for me may not work for someone else but I'm still trying to figure out so many different ways to include these kind of practices into my classes and to help others because like I said what works for me may not work for you but I promise you that you can do it and I'm really sorry that this is something that has held you so tight for so long. I am almost talking to my little girl self but I, it's the best way that I can do it. You're beautiful and you always have been and you always will be and I am so proud of you for figuring it out and for pushing through. You're ruthless. <laughs> this is like the first time I've really talked about my biodysmorphia to full length so this has been a little bit um, emotional for me so sorry. I'm not sorry. What? No, I'm not sorry. Take this time. It will take time to fix and to change, but it's 100% worth it. Like I said, once that muscle memory alone of just being able to have your own little cheerleader combating against the negative thoughts for you helps so much. And I believe in you. And every time you encourage yourself, it's going to fix and break the negative patterns that are happening in your head. I even was able to wear a more scandalous swimsuit at my friend's bachelorette party this past summer. I know that sounds crazy, but it was so liberating and it was something I would have never ever done but I really tried to work on myself enough to where I could feel comfortable to do it and I did it and I'm so happy I did because I know no matter what anyone else thinks I think I'm beautiful even on the days I'm struggling the most our bodies have a purpose and our bodies are a temple and they deserve to be worshipped you are the number one person that needs to be worshiping and valuing your temple once you start being sweeter to yourself and talking kinder you will see so many differences in the mirror. You won't look in the mirror and be disgusted as much. You'll actually like smile at yourself without realizing, like without faking the smile, you know, at the beginning, it's kind of hard because it's uncomfortable, but you'll eventually actually smile at yourself. And it's an incredible relationship to have with yourself. And I'm really excited for you. Before I let you go, no, you are so much more than your body. You have a beautiful mind, a beautiful soul, a beautiful person. You have your own desires and wants and you deserve to live your life how you choose to. Keep your head up. This will get easier. If there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. Comment your stories if you're interested. I would love to hear them. If you have anything else that you find worked for you or just things you wanna share with others, please do because that's what I want this to be. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you really try these out because I think, I think it'll be good for you. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.